Hello and welcome to another recording for my channel. <clears throat> this will be another stove video. Um, what I thought I'd do for new players is explain these buttons on the side here, or tabs. Everyone's got their own little descriptions for them. Um, so what we'll do is this one will transport you back to your ship. And depending on what sort of map area you're on, so we'll just do that and I'll show you what I mean. Depending on the map you go to, but normally when you're transporting to a ship, you will go from uh, the station or planet to your ship in that sector of space. So as you can see, we're not actually in space. We're actually in orbit around Deep Space Nine. So I'll just go to the space view here. So there's Deep Space Nine. So you can fly around here, but you can't leave the map. So we're down here, Deep Space Nine. So we're in this little square here, but we can't go anywhere else. So when you transport from a station to a ship, you're in orbit around that sh uh, station or um, planet. And then you just hit this one and that departs the um, space station. The little, cool little warp effect that lets you know you're warping out. So that's pretty much self-explanatory. It's just a quick, easy um, beginner's uh, tab thing. Um, you will be taught, if you have the lessons on, I, think, I believe this teaches you as you play along. But I'm one of these people like to turn everything off and uh, learn for myself, keep clicking on things. This will scan the immediate, oh no, sorry, this one will scan the immediate area, but there's nothing to scan in the, um, the map. And now this one will work, uh, the transport will work um, if you're orbiting a station like this space, not in outer space. And all you have to do is click on this, Make sure that one of these things is highlighted, and then you hit transwarp, and it should, but it has not transwarped. So I don't know, I think this might be a bit of a bug. Um, sometimes you've actually got to start moving, and then you hit it. Oh, then again, might be too close to um, Bajor for this one to work. Let's see if I can get to the firing. There we go. Nope, nothing. Might be a bug. Nothing's happening. So what I'm going to do is stop. Uh, head back to Deep Space Nine. So how do I do that? I go to the map area or area map. I find uh, Deep Space Nine, and you'll see that it highlights in white. You double click on that, OK it, and your ship will turn around and head to Deep Space Nine. Once it gets to Deep Space Nine, it will actually come to a full stop in orbit of that area. Um, you might not be close enough to activate the map sometimes. Sometimes you've got to go forward a little bit more for some sectors. And then you can actually get back into uh, Deep Space Nine. So let's see, we're almost there. So as we approach, we will slow down. You'll notice here, slowing down and come to a stop. And we can approach Deep Space Nine. Another way to get here is to go to the system list and do the same thing. You just find where you want to go, Deep Space Nine, double click on it, and it will take you there. So we'll go back into Deep Space Nine. So yeah, sometimes the transwarp won't work, but I think it's more of a bug than anything else. Uh, once you do use transwarp, you do have a few minutes of cooldown before you can use it again. So normally I'll use it at the end of a mission. Oop, no, I don't want to depart. As you can see, I, I can't approach Deep Space Nine. There's no um, acknowledgement that I'm here from Space Dock. So I'll go forward a bit. And then once you're really close to Deep Space Nine, this will pop up. And you can enter by the, um, the dock, you can beam in, beam directly to ops where um, you'll sometimes be given uh, mission details. And there is also one console on the ops um, deck that gives you uh, historical uh, feedback on missions you have done. Um, I haven't got any up there just yet because I haven't done any of the um, storylines that uh, create that. So I'll just beam back to Deep Space Nine. Um, now, before they did the refit on Deep Space Nine, you just appeared in the hallway. Would have, would have been about just outside this room. You would have appeared just here on the hallway, facing that direction. Um, you can see here that there's the transporter room. If you enter by dock, you'll enter here. You'll be inside the, uh, the docking tube on the other side of the door, and you'll just walk out in basically the same area. So that's how um, transporting to and from areas work, uh, transwarp and scan. Now you'll see when I hit scan, I'll... No, I can't, too, too closed in here, but let's see. 
So you can see that in that direction there is something I'm supposed to do. I don't know what it is because I shouldn't have any active um, uh, missions. Apart from this one, which I can do on any ground map. So you can do that out in space or on a station. And when you scan, you follow, you follow that direction where the um, scan has indicated something. And you can find anomalies. And they're the ones you all play the little mini games where you... Um, adjust your scanning range to uh, find the anomaly and then you'll get you will get R&D material so all of this I have gathered I th I'm pretty sure I've gathered just from scanning on my missions which are the two two main missions you start off with so just finding anomalies and scanning them now for every other mission you do you will have the opportunity to find other things as well but these are all very important for when we get to uh, the R&D tab, which I'll get to shortly. If not in this video, in another one. I do want to keep these short and to the point. So I don't want to get too um, involved in everything. Um, Hail Dominion. This should give you missions. So here are your missions or your uh, information tab. So your overview is uh, the most important features of the upcoming weekend. There's a upgrade weekend so you can actually get additional upgrade tokens uh, the episodes are the main story quest lines you will be doing um, again we've already been through these uh, first two which is your training and then your first major mission now the the only thing I like about this that you start off level 60 I'm already level 65 just from finishing those two missions so those two episode um, arcs is that when you start this one instead of getting a level uh, four or five uh, piece of equipment you'll actually get a level 12 now so you don't have to upgrade it as much so that's the only good thing about starting off a uh, high level you'll uh, the, the mission we have reports of a true wave everything we do is for the Empire okay so let's have a look so you can get these two things this one see is, is already a level uh, 11 instead of starting off at level 4 or something where you would normally you get it at level 11 which is pretty close to um, the highest level which is a level 14 I believe let's have a look do I have anything at 12 what about my character no upgrade let's see I'm wondering why that was highlighted okay let's get this here let's see if we can upgrade that we can okay and then I'll, we'll get into that upgrading later. I don't want to skip the whole heap of tabs. This is all again R&D sort of thing. So that will just give you uh, access to your main menu of content. Um, so your episodes. Available. Again, available is anything that is a mission that you have access to. So all these ones that are um, greyed out, you don't have access to them. So the available missions would be Spectre, uh, Engineered for War, Gamma Quadrant, Spectres, and again, uh, because you're level up, these are part of the main storyline. They're kind of a time uh, time travel episode arc, so which is separate from the main ones. So you get Future Proof and New Frontiers. So they're the ones you have access to. So as you can see, available. So they're not active. There's nothing active, but they are available. You can actually click on these and start a new mission. Um, some of them are just basically uh, daily missions where you can just constantly get the same. Let's see if we can get the rewards popping up. Nope, nothing. No, it doesn't actually tell you. Hmm. Okay. So some of these uh, will be daily missions, which you just do over and over again. Uh, you'll get to the ones with the the Romulan story arc. So once you finish this, you can actually repeat... Not this one, sorry. New Romulus. All of these are repeatable. Pretty much they're all sections of New Romulus, a map area, and you just redo the missions over and over again. And you get Romulan marks and also um, uh, oh, what are they? Tech tech pads, uh, information pads, which help you upgrade certain um, things within this story arc. So that's the available foundry. Again, are available missions, but they're subjected to the um, the game by actual players. These are missions created by players that like the game and want to add to it. So when you fly past certain uh, star systems in the map, it'll, it'll pop up with foundry missions, and um, these would be the ones that they pop up with. Now, 
not every single foundry mission would be on there because you'd have to just think that there are like hundreds if not thousands of people making missions and you can just see here browse all and these are all the more popular ones all you can see here is uh, four or f four stars or above uh, you can see here um, again all high star four and five stars so they're the ones that will pop up near the top people who rate them and then you just be um, just pick on pick these and you can do them I, I've never actually played a foundry mission I'm more than happy to play any particular foundry mission people suggest just to try them but um, they're just extra missions if you get if you play these episodes over and over again and get a bit bored you can actually go to the foundry and just pick a mission that has never been played before because it's um, submitted by the players themselves and you can just have a, a new kind of story arc to play through in progress so I just picked up skirmish from my episodes I just activated that so in progress the only thing I have active at this point is skirmish um, I can drop this mission, which means I won't be it won't be active anymore. But because it is a mission that is part of the episodes, as you can see, it's no longer there. I've got nothing active. Ah, oh, this is the um, endeavors. This is where you get. This I suggest you always do. Um, you will get um, a little golden box or an epic box, and when you open it, you'll actually get a whole heap of uh, a va uh, valuable um, uh, equipment. So I always suggest if this pops up, do it, get it done, because you're going to be doing this sort of stuff anyway throughout the game, and if you do it, you get a reward for doing it, and every uh, two days, a new one pops up. So that's in progress, accolades. Okay, so these are all the available accolades to get in the game. As you can see, some are ticked, which means I've already got them. So we'll just, uh, the ones that have completed should disappear from the list, so there should be two here, that one, two here. So let's have a look, completed, are gone. So these are the ones I still need to do. Okay, receive 200,000 anti-proton damage with your ship. So basically you just got to receive damage, you don't have to be destroyed by the anti-proton weapons, you just got to receive that much damage. Okay, receive 5,000 with your captain. So on the ground you've got to receive, I, th I think this has gone up, I'm pretty sure that used to be 2,000. Again, I don't really go to the accolades all that often. I just play the game and receive, you know, different things. So, uh, Kinetic will be um, getting hit with blades and stuff like that. No, it's a ship. Kinetic damage. So, that's like getting hit with blades and all sorts of things. Um, phaser damage. You can see every single weapon has its own effect. Uh, when you do get to the ma the full one where you get 200,000 or whatever the last one is, you actually get a 2% buff from it. So instead of taking 100% of the damage, you'll only take 98%. So it just gives your ship that little bit of extra um, power, a little bit of extra um, shielding. General accolades, cracked. Okay, you've actually got to activate a certain level thing here. Let's see if I can find it. Options. Again, it's been a long time since I've been through all these options. Uh, hmm. I can't remember where it is because I have not done it in such a long time. I normally just play the game and I do not mess with anything in-game. Okay, we'll get to that some other time if I can remember it. Okay, so accolades. And then logs pretty straightforward. Whenever you finish a mission or get an accolade or anything that to do with these tabs, if you do anything, complete one of these, it will come up here. You'll see that the last the time it actually happened in the in-game star date and the actual t uh, your actual date it happened. And you'll see that as you go down the list, that will go smaller and smaller, and this will just go further back in time because it's the latest one on top. Let's see, accolades. You'll see that I've got a whole heap and there's no way I can do that in two missions. Some of these are unlocked at the exact same moment. As you can see, the time doesn't change. That's when I activated this character. And some of these are um, cross-faction or cross-toon accolades. So if one toon gets that, all of them do. Personnel. Haven't done it. Hang on. I would assume um, up going from level 60 to 65 would be a personal thing. Okay, let's see, missions. So you can see I've finished all the missions on the first two episodes at least. Activity, what I've done. Grade, grade, grade. So they're the 
the five grades from 61, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And these are all the different um, ships I've activated. So that's those four tabs down the side. Quick, easy, straightforward. Uh, again, these are a quick, easy, straightforward. Um, I did actually do a side video where I did it on a different channel, but basically I'll put a link in the first video to it. So Legacy Unlocks are uh, basically um, things you can purchase in-game or unlock by doing particular things. And when I first created this character, all I did was I just clicked on them, claimed it, claimed it. You can see that some of them have they've all been claimed. So these ones you can claim more than once, which you really do not need to do, but you can claim them again. Promotional is stuff in-game that's happened or uh, sometimes, where is it? That's not in here. So these are certain things like if you go to their Twitch channel and watch their Twitch um, videos, they may actually have a giveaway where if you act, uh, make a comment and they like your comment, they'll give you a reward and sometimes it could be one of these. As you can see, Star Trek convention. I didn't go to the Star Trek convention because that's in America or I live in Australia and they're really expensive tickets to just fly over there for the one event. I would have loved to have gone, but um, yeah, money, money, money. So this is a reward they have for having the event sort of thing. If you're a player or um, you've done something within the game while that event is on, they'll activate it for your account. Um, personnel, so these are pretty straightforward. Actually, have I done that for that? Okay, didn't have those. So these are straightforward as well. Personnel, um, tribbles. These are items you put in your devices. And as you can see by reading the instructions here, again, you can go through them yourself and read them, but you can see that you'll get a particular benefit from using them. The yeah, These two here, as you can see, I've already claimed them. These ones actually cost money, but if you've been playing it for a while, you'll actually get these. And when you activate your tribbles, still got eight minutes, you will get marks for it. Nakuru and, that can't be, oh it is right, Dyson Sphere. And these will go to your reputation. And again, we'll get into that when we get to that tab. So the store is straightforward. Um, personnel, species. So... If you're playing, uh, I think this is Jem'Hadar. I'm not sure if this act uh, players are casting for stuff with Klingon Defense Force. Okay. So this activates for your Federation and Klingon. So if you're playing a Romulan or Jem'Hadar, you actually have to make uh, create a, f uh, a faction with a Federation or Klingon before you can play the Cardassian, um, uh, uh, by Cardassian bridge officer. So these are all bridge officers. Again, these are your crew. I'm not sure if I've actually got the Cardassian. Might have to buy the... So this is a intelligence officer. This is from a, a pack again from one of these promotions or something. I've unlocked it. I've activated it. Now I've got the um, intelligence officer. Companions. These are non-combat companions. So when you're flying your ship, you can have this uh, fly around your ship. As soon as combat... It uh, starts it disappears this is a ground pet um, I think that's a Federation only pet this is a Klingon only pet I think this is cross faction uh, Federation Klingon and Federation you'll notice there's more Federation that's not um, biasm that's uh, because within the TV show it's based on the Federation therefore there's a lot more Federation ships there's a lot more Federation animals there's a lot more federation um allies so all the alien species are more federation based so the game can only go so far they can speculate as to what sort of other pets there are like the the targ there are different varieties there are some that kind of look like a wolf there are some that sort of look like a pig there are some that sort of look like a cross between the two so depending on which series you use uh watch targ are basically um I, I don't know sure what you'd call them. They're like the, the they're like the uh, dogs of Earth. There are there's not just one dog. There are the canine species, which would be the tag, would be the species, I guess. And there are different subsets of species like um, pit bull and Doberman and all that sort of thing. So I like how um, that's done with Star Trek and how you can get these companions as well. 
combat pets. So again, these would go into your device slot and they will attack the enemy um, when you activate them like you would a triple. Um, if you have them on your bridge crew, like I do here, they will activate the uh, pet themselves when they feel it's appropriate. Um, sometimes they activate it too early or too late and they, you don't really get the benefit of it, but um, just having it there available is always a good thing. Bridge officers. So as you can see, you can pay uh, 500 uh, Zen to get a Borg officer. This one's the Federation one. This one's the Klingon one. Um, this opens up bridge officer slots. So as you can see here, I've got a few empties, but I can actually buy more slots here for more bridge crew. So um, if you like to have your crew set up as the, the, the stations for your ship, so you want five or six of them, um, you know, you want to have five or six really good setup ones, and then every time you do a ship or every time you do a mission, you can actually mix and match the ship um, consoles to suit. And then you might have a particular set of four that go on ground ground missions. So that's a good thing for the bridge officer slots. If you, the more you have, the more diversity you can have in your crew abilities. Um, again, a Federation. Um, character can buy these. These are the, I'm not sure, a sister species to the Andorians. They live on an ice moon, if you watch the Enterprise TV series. They're like blind, but somewhat psychic from, uh, from memory. I haven't actually watched that series in quite a long time. Um, Catan, I think the first time they appeared would have been in a Star Trek uh, movie. Um, Undiscovered Country, I believe. Again, I haven't watched any Star Trek in a long time. I've been watching a lot of comedies lately. I don't know why, but I've been in the comedy uh, phase for about a year and two. And that's pretty much all I watch. I've um, been watching a lot of MCU as well. Um, again, they're pretty much the same thing, but uh, more of a feral sort of uh, creature from the uh, Klingon side. And again, a liberated Borg. So I think this might be a cross faction because it's a Reman Romulan sort of thing. So if Romulans can join Federation or Klingon, so you can have two um, Borg officers. And I think if you're a lifetime membership, you get a Borg officer as a as a um, benefit anyway. So you can have up to three if I'm not mistaken. But again, I haven't got any Zen at this point, and I'll have to get some, and I can actually activate a lot of this later on. Okay, so that's the personnel. The appearance is costumes from throughout the TV shows. So let's have a look. Uh, original series Romulan. Uh, Riser, sort of 21st century. No, that can't be right, Riser. Human 21st. So this must have been when um, uh, Voyager traveled to... No, that was 96. They traveled back to in, future, in the past 96. I'm not entirely sure which episode this is based on. Maybe it was just an in-game thing. Intelligence. Again, I think you've got to have the intelligence uh, personnel to activate this. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but as you can see, I've purchased it. I've got it. So you only have to purchase it once and it opens on all your accounts. Klingon Tactical. Mercenary. I really like this set. I don't know why, but I always use the uh, Mercenary Pockets. This is even my character has. The mercenary. Oh, there you go. You can see he's got the mercenary um, patches. Oh, wrong one. I just like that mercenary look. So you can see through all of this, there are so many different varieties of. Um, and again, mercenary isn't a Romulan set. It's a set that's just there for everyone. So Federation, you can see there again. There's a lot more Federation than there are. Klingon and Romulan combined. It's not biasm, that's just the fact that the series is based around Star Trek uh, Federation, and that's how you get all these different costumes. And again, I've purchased them all, I've got them all. Boosts. These are these things up here. So every time you buy one of these things, you, you can activate it on a particular character, and that will just give you extra bonus points. I think they've upped it to 20? Oh, 50%. It used to be 20, now it's up to 50% 50, uh, 50 increase in the amount of experience points. 50, 20, there you go, 20% for most, ah, oh, wait a minute, these are a bigger patch. 
150, 150, 10,000, 2,000. Okay, so they're, they're just bigger, bigger and better. But they're how you boost your character. So for the Gem Hadar, you wouldn't actually need any of these. But for Federation, Klingon, and Romulan, you would if you want to get there faster. But, you know, a, a nice, slow, steady pace is always good. You um, learn more that way. If you, um, if you upgrade too fast, you're going to skip um, this sort of stuff here. So for every level you go up, you actually get more and more benefits in, um, all the way up to level 65. I've actually, I actually haven't used this yet either, so I'm going to have to check that out. So that's your boost services. Again, this is all um, to help with the, the, uh, the gameplay itself. It doesn't actually affect too much of the game. Um, Energy credit increased to 15 million to 2 billion. So 15 million, if you've got 15 million credits, you're doing pretty well. Um, I'm not sure how much I have. I, this character doesn't have any, but I think I've got up to um, 80 million at this point. So um, 15 million is pretty good. Nothing really costs that much above that. The 2 billion is simply because if you want to buy a lot of stuff in a bulk, um, such as, I'm not sure if I've got anything in my inventory. So, uh, let's just say you've got uh, R&D stuff. This comes in lots of 999. So, let's see. More details. It doesn't actually give you a price range on this sort of stuff. But, um, just say it's a... The purple ones, the blue and purple ones are like $100 per thing. You times that by 999, that's how much you're going to be looking at buying. And some of them are like two or $3,000 per item. So a lot of people f do what they call farming, where they just get a whole heap, and then, then they'll sell them at 999 bundles for a couple of billion credits. You know, a couple of hundred million credits or billion credits sort of thing. Okay. Um, elite. Again, I've claimed this. This is part of the... Um, Gem Hadash stuff. I th no, it's not. Gem Hadar is the Vanguard set. So the Elite must have been for another purchase. Now that's the Elite. The Elite Vanguard set. Okay. Again, ship slots. Um, you, you start off a certain amount. If you want to collect ships like I do, um, that's these things, uh, ships and shuttles. If you, you like to collect everything, um, so basically when you go into the ship buying area, you'll have a list like this of uh, available ships and then empty slots, and then you can actually buy more slots for your ships. Um, let's have a look. Where are we compared to where? Going to head this way. So here's the shipyard on this space. Now it's right next to the uh, transporter room. So let's manage the ships. So as you can see, I've got uh, one active slot. So I've got one empty slot that I can actually use. But I can buy more for 500 credits. As you can see, I don't really need it just yet because I'm still trying to get through these ships. So what I want to do is once I get this to level 6, I will dump that into my dry dock because I don't like to destroy, uh, destroy ships or get rid of them. I like to try to keep them as much as possible. I'm a collector, I'm a hoarder. And that's what that does. Okay, so you got uh, okay. So you got them for all the different things. You got uh, again in no, I don't want to talk to no. Greetings. It's. I want to manage my ships. So with this, you got the same sort of thing with the dry dock. When you dump them into the dry dock, you've got ten spaces, but you can buy more dry dock spaces and get all your ship. And every single ship you collect, you can just shove it in there and um, keep everything. Okay, so services, and then again, bridge officer slots, which are these things. Um, character slots, which are at the beginning of the game when you create your captain in the first place, your Klingon, Romulan, Federation, Dominion captains. And there's pretty much a slot for everything. Um, bank slots, your uh, inventory slot, your bank slots, your shared bank slots, which I've maxed out for most of my characters, um, are all here to buy more. Um, again, with the starter pack that was down the bottom here, you actually get 60 bank slots within this character alone, 30 inventory slots, which are this, um, two bridge officer slots as well, um, 
shared bank slot. This is already maxed out, so this won't affect me in any way. One character slot. That's a captain, so a Federation Klingon captain sort of thing. Um, items uh, used in game. This should be really uh, be under personnel. It's a um, it's a bridge officer you can uh, have. So that's a character, another bridge officer you can have. Uh, again, I've already claimed it. Or I can't. Your character cannot claim this. It's a Federation use. That's from the Kelvin timeline. Uh, apparently, it was in the second movie, which I never saw. I don't, I'm not really a fan of the JJ verse. Okay, so this is again from a previous um, expansion of Temporal. That's my Vulcan science officer. Six. I'm not entirely sure what that was. It's been a while since I've activated them. Like, I've activated them straight away. Uh, this is it the Red Matter Converter. Now this thing is from the first JJ verse. This is the the red matter that destroys planets and suns and stuff. So this thing is an item you can actually put on your ship, but uh, when the promotion actually had it, you can only have it once per account. I'm not sure if they've updated this or, or they're going to upgrade it. But my main character has the red matter. Um, you've also got to be careful when you activate this. You can't transfer it from one character to another. So you have to make sure that when you activate this or purchase it or claim it, you're on the character you want it to be with. Um, when I first got the game, I wasn't part of Ark, it was just Star Trek, so when I, once I activated the Ark um, Perfect World Link, I got this pack. And again, it was just, I can't even remember what was in it, but it must have been, um, you know, a bit of uh, energy credits, um, possibly some R&D materials, so bits and pieces. Here we go, tech upgrade. I've already purchased that, I think that's in my bank account. That's another expansion, the Delta Rising expansion. And as you can see, everything just seems to have uh, a benefit to it. This um, lets you upgrade a T5 ship to a T5U, which is a T5 upgraded. And when you do that, let's see, I'm pretty sure I've got at least one. Yeah, here we go. Free upgrades. So I've only got one free upgrade, I think, per account. Then you've actually got to buy them. So as you can see, there's... Uh, uh, this ship has the um, mastery unlock, so when you upgrade this ship, which we will do, you can see it will upgrade to this, and we'll complete the free upgrade. Boom. Now you got a mastery unlock. Now, let's see, is it this one? No. Hey, there's another one. Free upgrade. How many free upgrades do I have? Oh, I think I've got three, up free, up three free upgrades for this. As you can see, every every ship has, uh, from level f T5, you up to... Uh, T6 and Fleet t fives and Fleet T6, uh, T being tier, all have these benefits of once you get to a certain level, it unlocks. Um, with the, I think these are Gem Hadar only, so if any Gem Hadar character you create will actually unlock, I believe it unlocks all of them. So let's see what it says. On this account, any character on this account. It doesn't say Gem Hadar or Dominion character, it just says character. I'm pretty sure these are a De Gem Hadar ship only. I don't think Federations or Klingons can actually get this. It's only a uh, Gem Hadar faction ship. So maybe um, later on they're going to update it so um, even these ships that don't have it might actually get it eventually. They'll probably just see how this works out. And if it works out good for them or us, they'll probably expand it out. So let's see what else. Items. Uh, research and development. This just gives you a whole heap of material for your research and development. A um, few upgrades to help um, upgrade particular items. Ship upgrade token. Again, just something you can claim. These are for unlocking these lock boxes. Now, I think they sell for roughly a million, or probably even more now, because um, the lock boxes have awesome benefits so let's just check the more details so you can see here light battle cruiser and again anyone can get this this is a this isn't gem hadar or a pro, uh, only this is every single character will collect these boxes and these are the possibilities of what you can get um, i think it's one in a hundred sort of thing um uh two and a hundred and as you go down the list um there are normally videos on youtube of people who have done oh awesome I will definitely be getting it. 
again, I'm a hoarder. I like to collect everything. So I will be getting all these eventually. So I think these are, uh, for the most, um, part of the Jem'Hadar expansion. But Kirkland, Loras, Quark... I don't, no, no, I don't think Quark's been in any previous. Cherish me now. Yeah. So a lot of these are characters, just so you can have them as holographic bridge crew. Uh, plasma weapon box. So pretty much you get a little another little box... And then when you activate that, you can actually get a ship weapon or a hand weapon that is Ferengi plasma weapon. Um, these sh aren't normally part of a set. Uh, again, these are those bonuses from the boosts, where you can get the little bonuses up here. Uh, let's see, research and development packs. So these, again, the develop research and development packs are just things that give you R&D. Uh, low buy crystals, that's the, ne the next thing. No, it's not even here. I think you have to go to certain space stations, or if you have low buy crystals on your account, you double click the low buy and it'll actually activate the um, thing. But you can see here fleet ship modules. So if you're part of a fleet, there are particular ships that have a fleet um, variant of them. Let's see if we can have a look at that. Acquire a ship. So as you can see, all these little dots, these are all the ships available to you. Now you can take these, these dots and make less of them by just clicking on that other uh, non-faction based ships small craft uh, um, shuttle bay uh, shuttles and then um, you got these different types of ships and as you can see all of th it all goes back once you've got them all unselected so you can see here there's not a whole heap of them but you know there's quite a few um, that are the same battle cruisers again I'm part of the Klingons the Klingons have battle um, ships the Dominion have battleships so as you can see, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, Klingon and Jem'Hadar battleships. And then you have um, other. Let's have a look at the other. Okay, so these are like the... Oh, it's quite a few other. All right. These are like um, the Gorn ships, which are a Klingon faction. Obskalisks, which are... Um, part of a storyline so uh, that's like a, another alien species but you get one of their I think you can get two of their ships one's an Obsilisk carrier and one's an Obsilisk sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly um, then there are science vessels which the Federation Romulan and Klingons have worked together with now, these sorts of ships I can only assume that um, the Dominion at uh, a particular pace in the game might actually start getting their own varieties or versions of these ships um, so let's have a look so items that's pretty much sorted we were going through all the different things this is a starting off pack again um, duty officers so these are the duty officers are the ones that you will use to do duty officer um, missions there's nothing on the current map so you click on this, you find something that's doable, like you always hit this filter to help yourself out. So even though there are military ones, military, medical and development, I can't do the medical. You can see here I'm missing a requirement, um, some items. So I always do this before I start, that way I don't click on something you can, uh, annoyed that I can't do it. Requires a Dominion officer. And these are what, this is what you'll get in reward for finishing it if you do manage to get a high enough ranking. Okay. So duty officers just help with that. Again, you only start off with... 100, I think. Does it say? Oh, 58 of 100 um, on... Res you got 58 officers out of 100. And with this, you can upgrade it four times to 500. You get 500 duty shop officer slots, and again, this new character hasn't have anything upgraded. I've just done the story so far. Or you can go 25 at a time or 100 at a time. I do believe there was a promotion at one point where you can actually get 100 for doing a particular thing. Um, again, Federation only, Klingon only, Romulan only, uh, D Dominion only sort of setups. Ships. This is a thing all of its own. As you can see, all the ships here with upgrade tokens, tier six ships, you can see how many there are. 
And again, you can see some are greyed out. The ones that are greyed out are the ones that are normally the Federation or the Romulan, which are not part of the Dominion. Um, so all the ones that are lit up are Klingon or Cross Faction, which has a Klingon variant within it. Federation, Romulan, Klingon. So you'll find that whichever ones are highlighted, I'll have a Klingon variant of that particular thing that I can use. Um, these are the ships you want to end game, you want to get eventually. Um, these are the ones you'll be using kind of, you know, towards the end of the game. These are the end game ones. Again, you'll start off with a, a, a small ship and just work your way up as you go up. Um, Ensign, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander, Commander, Captain, Admiral, sort of thing. Small craft, again, shuttlecraft. Haven't claimed this one yet, so I'll claim that. And there you go. Now I've got two shuttles. One's a Dominion shuttle, one's a Klingon shuttle. So let's have a look. Bridge packs just give you different skins, uh, different color skins for the bridge. As you can see, the um, support struts have gone. Different, slightly different color scheme. You can just see that that's what these do. I've, I've, again, I've purchased them all. Um, you can see all the different types of um, color schemes. I think the Federation have a better... Klingons are just red, whereas the Federation really has a ver different variety. You can see how this darker battleship, more of a science sort of... So they've got the um, engineering, science, and tactical sort of variations of the ships. And as you can see here, this comes out a bit further, gives you a bit more command space, darker tones, meaning battle stations. You can see here, it's all kind of red, but, you know, there's different layouts. You can see there's greenish to a reddish... So there's not much difference, but again, the color scheme just changes just enough so that you're either a peaceful Klingon or you're always battle ready sort of thing. So they've actually given you um, options here. And again, let's just move on. Because again, this here is just basically going through every single ship. There's not much point. Ah, discount packs. Again, you'll see here there's a three pack, a three pack. Um, let's do this. Three pack. I'm going to have to go through and claim all these ships as well. Where are you? Cross faction. I just clicked on you earlier. There are a lot of ships I've got to claim. So, I, again, I like to claim everything. There you go. There you go. All nine. So, you got the um, Andorians. I think this is an Andorian pack. I think that's the. Andorians are the uh, Federation. Uh, I'm not sure. Lithian are uh, Klingon. D1 are um, Romulan. And again, once this um, expansion gets more expanded, hopefully there'll be a Dominion version variant here. So there'll be four, four lots of three, so you can get 12 ships instead of just the nine. But just say you only have a Federation character and you only play Federation, you can actually get the uh, three set of only the Andorian vessels. So let's see... That's a Klingon one. Yeah, okay. So as you can see, the discount packs are just all the multi-packs where you can actually get them a bit cheaper because the singles are like um, uh, 3,000 or something like that. 2,000, 3,000. And then when you get to three ships, you'd expect it to be three times as much, but instead of being 6,000 from two, it'll only be five. And then when you get the... 12 pack instead of being 15,000 because it's three times as much as that it's only 12,000 so it you're better off getting the bundles even if you're just playing a federation only one day you might get bored and say I'm going to try Klingon you'll have that bundle available to you so I've already purchased it all I have to do is claim it and I'll get the ships featured are the main ones um, I don't think this changes all that often keys are always available um, research and development is always useful upgrades useful boosts are useful and then the Gamma Quadrant is the one that they're advertising now because of the Gamma Quadrant expansion. Okay, so that's <laughs> that's the Z store. I think I'll end the video here because I think I'm pretty sure I've been going over an hour. So I'll end this video here. I'll just uh, like to say um, I've only had one person comment on my channel, and we've had a little bit of a conversation on the last couple of days. The the, the problem is that. Um, I can only log in once or twice a day, so he will respond, or she, I'm not sure if it's a male or female, but they'll respond, then you know, 12 to 24 hours later, I'll respond, then 20, 24 hours later, I'll 
get on there and then uh, have responded, so I'll respond. So um, I'm sorry if it takes too long to get back to you, but you know, I do have a full-time job. I do um, have to sleep. I do have other things to, in my life to do. If I could afford to quit my job to do this full-time, I would. I love playing games. Um, who doesn't? But, um, you know, it's all about the money, all about getting life together. So I'd just like to thank the person that um, has uh, commented on my channel and had a conversation with me. They've actually said that I'm not very good at ground battle, and I admit that. I do not like ground battle, to be honest. I prefer space battles. And they actually said, you know, it's obvious. Um, it's true, it's obvious. I'm not a good uh, ground battle person. So I'd like to say, um, you know, I'm happy that I'm getting comments back, uh, feedback on that. I might have to do a few um, off-video gameplays of ground battles so I can get better at it. The only time I ever do a ground battle is when I'm playing uh, missions, episode missions. Otherwise, when it comes to um, other parts of the game, I, I always choose the, the space battles if I can. Um, so yeah, again, I'm more than happy to take criticism. I didn't get offended by it. He was, uh, they were 100% correct. I am not very good with um, ground battle. Um, it's not my forte in the gameplay. So I'd like to end the video here by saying I'm more than happy to take criticism. Um, just keep it civil in the conversation below. And I will see you in the next video.